Welcome to my channel, I'm Gary Wiryawan and today I'm introducing a new series where I talk about some of my photos and I share to you the thought process behind the photos as well as the techniques that I use to take the photo. So let's start with today's photo. So this is the photo that I will share to you today. I will share the story behind the photo, the thought process as well as the technique in the video. However, I want to make this into a collaborative community kind of thing where you can share your image as well so if you want to share an image I will provide a link in the description click on that link and please share your image as well as the story behind it the gear that you use and the technique that you use to create that image and I will feature it on future episodes anyway let's talk about the photo the photo is a photo of a burning ice cream and it was part of a Japanese teppanyaki style of cuisine and this was taken on a restaurant a local restaurant where I usually eat teppanyaki. Eating at a teppanyaki restaurant is always kind of interesting because you will enjoy not just the food but also the live cooking part of the uh, overall cuisine experience and the burning ice cream thing was part of their menu so it was actually their dessert. Anyway that ice cream burning thing was always very interesting for me because it's a play between a contrast of hot and cold represented by the flames and the ice cream and it's always interesting to me because it's two elements that's not supposed to be combined together in a food so I really wanted to take a picture of that and I got a chance when I eat to that uh, teppanyaki restaurant many years ago so you could say that this is kind of a uh, food photography kind of uh, photo but actually it's you know a little bit more artsy abstracty kind of thing so uh, I don't really define it into one photo genre but uh, you, we can call it a uh, food photography for now so now let's talk a little bit about the gear that I used to take that photo so the camera that I used that time if I remember correctly it was an Olympus EPL6 which is a small micro four thirds camera that's not too big and it's almost pocketable and the lens that I used to capture that image is the Olympus 45 millimeter f1.8 prime lens it's a medium kind of telephoto it's not too long but it starts to get that compression so it's kind of useful to take this kind of bokehi artsy picture because then you can get a little bit of compression make the uh, uh, background looks a little bit larger than it's supposed to be so now let's talk a little bit about camera settings I'm pretty sure that the ISO that I used to take this picture is 3200 which is high especially for a micro fortress camera like my Olympus Olympus EPL6. Using high ISO with micro fortress camera is actually a little bit dangerous but I will explain to you later why I choose such high ISO on this image and the shutter speed that I use is 1 1 60th of a second and the aperture is f 2.0 also I'm pretty sure that I use full manual in the camera setting so that I can control every single exposure setting that I can the shutter speed the aperture and the ISO individually by myself because I don't want to trust the auto metering of the camera to judge the correct exposure for me because of Often time it can miss especially on high contrast situation like this and also I was shooting raw so I have the flexibility to edit the image later on during post processing especially when it comes to white balance as well as a little bit of dynamic range in the exposure so let's talk a little bit about the composition of the image so basically I'm trying to fill the frame with the flames and the ice cream because the flame is a little bit large then inevitably the ice cream is a little bit small on the frame but still the point of interest is both the ice cream and the flame and because I'm not sitting in the proper position in the restaurant I got a little bit of a, a distracting background so I'm trying to find the perfect angle where the background isn't too cluttered also I took a lot of shots not just this single photo but probably about 10 or 12 pictures and then select one of the best one which ended up being this picture that I shared to you so this is important shoot a lot of of pictures and then choose only a few that is the best ones also I want to mention a little bit about camera angle so during that time when I was shooting I don't just shoot like this you know from eye level from me I try to make sure that I'm at the same level as the ice cream so that I can maximize the depth between the 
ice cream, the flames, as well as the background. And also by doing that, I will maximize the bokeh as well to get as much background blur as possible, especially in this restaurant because the background is a little bit cluttered with other people's table or maybe other guests or so on. So now let's talk a little bit more about camera settings. So I chose 1 1 60th of a second as my shutter speed because it is high enough to get the uh, flames to be a little bit freezed but not completely freezing and uh, just to get a little bit details on the flames and that is important because you don't want the flames to look all mushy and just kind of disappear into the background also I was using higher ISO because I want to expose a little bit to the right so this image is actually a little bit overexposed it's a little bit exposed to the right and why I do that is because I want to make sure that I capture as much information as possible even with the risk of a uh, blowing the highlight a little bit but I don't think it's a problem because I'm shooting raw and also the benefit of uh, shooting with the exposure to the right is that you will able to minimize noise because later on during post-processing I can just reduce the exposure a little bit the brightness a little bit and crush the black so that the noise will be gone so with micro four thirds this kind of uh, exposing to the right technique works pretty well so let's briefly talk about post-processing I'm using Adobe Lightroom to post-process my images including this one and I'm shooting raw as well so I was able to capture as many dynamic range as I need and make sure that I don't miss any information that I need during post-processing uh, speaking of the post-processing itself I was adding a little bit of contrast to make the picture pop and then I was also adding just a tiny bit of clarity not too much just to make the picture look more interesting and more alive and I also uh, reduce a little bit of the highlight to make sure that I can get uh, enough detail in the flames so nothing gets blown out also I'm reducing the shadow to make sure that the cluttered background is a little bit cleaner also during post-processing I was doing a little bit of noise reduction because you know with micro Fortis camera even with exposed to the right kind of technique noise is still a problem especially in lower light and higher ISO all right so now let's talk a little bit about how to improve this image next time I have the opportunity to take this kind of picture first what I want to do is I want to use a longer lens such as this uh, Olympus 75 millimeter f 1.8 to get even more compression so that I can make the flames look even bigger and more dramatic in the picture also there's still too much clutter in the background on this picture in my opinion so next time I have the opportunity I will make sure that I sit on the right position so that I can get as least clutter in the background as possible also if possible next time I have the opportunity to take this kind of picture again I want to incorporate a little bit of off-camera flash technique so that I can get a little Little bit of dramatic lighting on the ice cream to create a little bit of highlight and shadow so that the ice cream looks more dramatic but as of right now I'm pretty happy with this picture even with its flaws yeah so that is all for today's video I hope that you enjoyed this video and also if you want to contribute into this new segment that I made where uh, we review pictures together please send your pictures on the link that I provide in the description as well as provide some story and tell tell us about the technique that you use to take the picture as well as the gear use and some other information that might be useful for us also don't forget to support my channel by liking this video sharing this video and subscribing to my channel down below thank you and goodbye